Today is August 13, 2014, and we are gathered at the National Guard Armory in Augusta, Georgia, as part of the Veterans Oral History Project. Today, in conjunction with the United States Library of Congress and the Augusta Richmond County Historical Society, we will hear the story of Clifford B. Dawson, a veteran of the United States Army who served in both the Korean and Vietnam Wars. I am Bill Tilt and I will conduct the interview and assisting with the interview is Stan Schrader. First of all, Mr. Dawson, we want to thank you for participating in our program. And why don't you start with uh, telling us a little bit about when and where you were born and uh, what you were doing prior to getting involved in the service. I was born November 16, 1931 in Galleon, Alabama. Grew up and went to school in Demopolis, Alabama. Mm, is that close by? Yeah. Uh, Twelve miles away. Yeah, yeah. I lived in school, lived and boarded going to school. Was it an all-black school then? It was all black, yes. Yeah. Church school? No, it wasn't a church school. It was just yeah, regular okay. uh, uh, black uh, high school. Oh, good. Okay. I graduated in 1950. What was your family doing? My mom taught school. My dad was a painter at Bessemer, Alabama, and then later on, 41 to 45, Tuskegee, with the uh, Tuskegee Airmen. And he was a painter, did you say? He was a painter, aircraft painter. Huh. Did he paint the, the nose art on it, or the red tails painted, on the planes? The, or? What he told me was AT-6 training uh, uh, plane. Good, good. He worked there under General Benjamin O'Davis. Oh, yeah, he's, he's a famous guy. Did you ever meet him? I met General Davis one time. Uh-huh. Well, and I was over there just for a two-week Boys Club meeting. My dad took me over there and just turned me loose with the rest of the Boys Club members. Boy, you lived history then, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Great. Okay, um, how did you wind up getting involved in the service? I got drafted. I I went to work right after high school in a little place called Tuscaloosa in Holt, Alabama. And what were you doing? What kind of work? I was a coal maker in a, a central founder pipe shop. Uh-huh. And I was there for about a year and a half. I moved from there to East St. Louis, Illinois for about a year and a half, maybe a little less. Then I come in the Army. I come in the Army, 1952. So, so the, your friends and neighbors decided that... Yeah, I was drafted. <laughs> I was drafted. That they needed your service, huh? And, and that was in August 8, 1952. 1952. Super. Okay, uh, the Korean War was on at that point in time. Korean War started 25th of uh, June, 1950. Yeah, so so you knew the Korean War was on, you get this draft notice. What was that I like? Got drafted. I got drafted right after during, during that time, but I didn't come in the Army until, 19, until August of 1952. Ah, okay. So uh, where did you go to basic training? I took basic, I went to Fort Jackson, South Carolina for processing from there to Fort Jackson, I mean, to Fort Riley. Fort Riley, Kansas. I took basic at 10th Infantry Division, Fort Riley, Kansas. So the 10th Infantry Division was stationed at Riley, and they were a training division? It was time? a training division. There was three regiments, the 85th, 86th, and 87th Regiment. Yeah, you were telling me an interesting story about that. Uh, they, had, they had three regiments. One was was all black, one all white, and the third one was a mixture, huh. integrated. So that was the beginning of the integration process of the of the army. Well, yes, it had started. The integration Truman had signed the pact for to desegregate the military. I think it was signed in yeah, 1948. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I was in a uh, integrated. Uh, so what what unit were you in? Were you were in the 86th regiment? I was in the 86th regiment. Which was, was integrated. That was integrated. Yeah. The 85th was, a, uh, I think I might have it right, but one was, 80, one was the 85th and the other was the 87th. One was all black, the other was uh, uh, all white, and then you had the mixture of the 86th infantry. Uh, so so you were you were in, uh, uh, in the integrated unit. Where were the guys from? Were they from all over the country? All over, all over the country. Okay. My bunk mate, well, the 86th had a, had a mixture, as I said, was, was uh, 
it was integrated. Uh -huh. But see, like they had, like I was thinking coming over here, this, well, that was four, four platoon, upstairs and downstairs, A, B, C, and D. I was in, the, I was upstairs. My bunk bed was another black guy, another two on the other side. They had four upstairs and four downstairs. Huh. And it was, wasn't any problem. It, it was the old wooden barracks. Old wooden barracks. Yeah. yeah upstairs and downstairs. And what kind of training did you get? I took uh, light infantry t uh, training. So well, regular infantry basic? I took, eight, I took basic. Eight, eight weeks training. Okay. So, so you did a lot of marching in PT and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, but the 86 and 87 took the, took the woods, uh -huh. everything. And see, they took 16 weeks, I took eight weeks. Uh -huh. and, and did you fire the M1 rifle? Is that the M1. Training? I fired the M1, the, uh, the 30 caliber and a uh, rocket launcher, huh. and we had grenade. So, so you went through the whole, uh, did you crawl under the wire with the yeah. machine gun firing over there? Yeah, under the wire, that night firing over <laughs> yeah. your head and so forth. All that was considered as your eight weeks training. Yeah, yeah. Then I left there and went to eight weeks of, uh, uh, what do you call it, AIT. And what, what was, uh, what I kind was of training? What kind of training did you get in AIT? I, I took uh, pole climbing. And be a wire. So that was a signal, that signal, signal training. Then I, did I, you ask to be involved in signal? Or did you have any? No, I was just drafted into signal. And they just said you're you're in the signal corps. You, you, you and you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so you learned. What did you learn in uh, in that training? What I learned well in signal was climbing pole, uh, stringing wire, and uh, switchboard. Uh, well, tying the. Uh, uh, Square knots and so forth, and feel why. How do, how do you climb a pole? What do, what do they have you do there? Do you have special equipment or something? Oh, yeah, we had special alignment, alignment equipment, regular alignment equipment. And what's that? A belt and a set of hooks. Uh huh. Uh, well, the same type that they use, they used to use in civilian life. They use them at Fort Gordon. Or, yeah, and you just shimmy up the pole using that belt, I guess. Uh, right? Yeah, I, I crawled up, went up the pole. Was there up. any spikes on your, yeah, on your yeah, feet? Yeah, we had. Regular climbers. Yeah, on, on, on your uh, boots, yeah, okay. And then um, you had to lay wire and, and, lay wire. and connect it to whatever. Yeah, you lay from, uh, we lay what they call from high to lower and uh, and across. It took regular uh, training, that, which was normally, I guess that's why I got put in uh, artillery when I got to Korea because you had to lay the line you line, uh, line from A to B uh, to the headquarters, and you had all type of, uh, you just had regular peel wire. Now, when you're laying a wire between units, you know, that was pretty far apart. You know, they weren't yeah. right next door, right? Uh, and did you have to cross? They had already laid the line. Did you have I, to cross roads, Jay? Oh, yeah. The lines was either overhead or uh, underground. Uh, how do you get it up in the air? Well, they had what, to, believe it or not, we had what they call combat poles. Huh. small poles, and then we had, uh, sometimes that was a regular uh, telephone pole that we could connect on to. We went, we supported Kempo Air Base around. Well, that's in Korea, yeah. That's yeah. Korea. But I mean, when you were learning how to do this, I, you had to you had oh, a yeah, we pole had, under in the training area, we had, we had uh, overhead cro uh, crossing, we had uh, underground, and you used picks yeah. and, and show it to uh, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, to lay the lines, and then you had to put the lines where they are uh, separated from being hit by a truck or what have you. Yeah. You overhead cross. Keep those tanks from running over. Right. <laughs> yeah, you had to you had to simulate tanks running over them sometime. Uh, <laughs> okay. If you, did, if you didn't, it'd be chopped into everything. Yeah. Yeah. As an old tanker, I can appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, uh, so so how long was that training? Was that another eight, that was weeks, eight weeks? That yeah. was eight weeks. So now we're towards Christmas of '52. Uh, did they give you an assignment? To, uh, yeah, I had an assignment to uh, to Korea. Yeah. Okay. So you knew you were going to Korea. I, knew I was going to Korea, yeah. but did, I didn't know exactly where yeah, I was going. Yeah. Did your parents uh, <laughs> get yeah, excited? Yeah, I had a brother. Uh, my older brother had been to Korea. Ah, what was his name? Eugene. Eugene. Okay. Eugene he, uh, Dawson. He was. He went to Korea in 1951. Oh, he was there early there then. He was uh, seventh division. Uh huh. Uh, 
Good. So now you got orders to Korea. How did you get there? I, well, I went to Fort Lewis, Washington. Mm -hmm. Well, after a ten-day, what a ten-day leave, Fort Lewis, Washington. To I flew Royal Canadian Transport from Fort Lewis to Alaska to uh, Tokyo. Believe it or not. Drake, I went through Drake, what's that, Drake, uh... Drake Concern? Yeah, it was, uh, Drake, uh, we, well, I guess you called it Drake Concern, it was in Japanese. Ah. But we went from there, uh, spent, we got retrained, uh, uh, qualified on weapons, M1 rifle and so forth. Back in, in, in Japan? In Japan. Yeah. So they gave you kind of a refresher course. Yeah, a refresher, three-day refresher from there. They were put on a train, sent down to Yokohama, Japan, and we went by boat from there to Incheon. Incheon, okay. Now, the Incheon's up close to the 38th parallel. No, no, Incheon was, uh, I guess you'd call from it Fusan. south of Seoul, from Seoul. Yeah, yeah, close, close to Seoul, yeah. Yeah, in, Incheon Landing is where we went. We got off there and we put on... Uh, train sent to some went to Yongdong Po, some went to uh, a place there in in the I can't think of the name of the place. Well, the war had kind of settled into a, almost a stalemate, and they were fighting well, in the hills. Kind of a stalemate. Yeah. Uh, up and down beyond the uh, the the river. The Han River. The Han River. Yeah. So you were south of the Han River. I was south of the Han River. At, uh, outside of Kempo. Kempo so, Air Base. Kempo Air Base. It was a fighter base, 86, F-86 uh, was flying out of there. Okay, so, and that and that's, uh, Kempo Air Base is now uh, evolved into uh, a major international airport yeah. for uh, South I Korea. I was told that. Yeah. I went back through there later on. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. But, uh, all right, Kempo, well, it was about five different uh, anti-aircraft artillery units. So you were assigned to an anti-aircraft unit. I was assigned to an What six, unit was that? 60, wait a minute, 52? 68. Oh, 68 AAA gun battalion. Yeah, yeah. We had 90 mm guns and quad 50s. Okay, and so you, this air base was surrounded by any aircraft uh, units? Surrounded by any aircraft okay. artillery, yeah. which we supported. Them like 68 AAA had 90 millimeters, the 865th AAA they had quad 50s self propelled. Uh huh. Uh, uh, 40 millimeters somewhere? Yeah, 40 millimeters. And then the 933rd was the same as the 68 AAA they had uh, 90s. Well, 90 is a big gun. I mean, that's that's what they yeah, had on they, tanks. <laughs> 90 millimeters was fired in remote sometime. And, Radar control? Radar control. Yeah, okay. So now here you are, a young man from Alabama. You're going over there and all of a sudden you're in Korea. And and uh, what was your first impressions of Korea? Was there a lot of damage or? No, we didn't. We got hit once in a, once in a, a blue moon, like what we called Bed Check Charlie would come down the river, maybe, which was very uh, protected. A Kempo Air Base and the Han River, uh -huh. because my unit said ran on on the Han River, and they were there until I left. I found out later that they moved someplace else. Yeah. So the Han River was a, a good uh, uh, well, barrier, south of Seoul. A natural barrier. Yeah. So Han River was south of Seoul. Yeah. Yeah. So now you 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 got you walked into the unit for the first day. And, and the first sergeant met you, or where did you, your brand new replacement? They well, all we been had, in position. Uh, well, my uh, supervisor was uh, uh, it was a buck sergeant. Well, uh -huh. I guess it wasn't buck sergeant then. He was sergeant. He was some out of uh, Ohio. I can remember the name Flashio. Okay. Well, you you were assigned to B Company. I was assigned to B Company, six eight triple eight gun battalion. Okay. And what was your job in B Company? I went up. My first job was on the switchboard, which I learned, I, I took that in, in, in uh, AIT. And then the main thing was on the wire, in the wire section, 
which we, we had to continue to support and maintain lines, which was about eight different lines ran out of the, the battery to various units, to all the units plus the battalion headquarters and so forth. So, so let me let me back up to the switchboard now. This is one of them things where somebody would ring, and then you'd have to yeah. you'd have to pick up a handset and say, "Who do you want?" And no, then, we had we had a switchboard, and you the, plugged the it old in. type with a BD seventy two. Yeah. So you had to physically plug in a yeah a yeah line. yeah the Hanson cords plug in. They had twelve drop, believe it or not. Yeah. It's a BD seventy two uh, that was tied into the battalion. The, Three line company, uh, three line batteries, and then we had throughout the direction throughout, throughout my unit. Well, from the motor pool to the gun section, we maintained the lines where because the gun was uh, were hooked in what they call a hot loop. Uh -huh. Then you had you name it whatever uh, part we had like the oily room supply and all this. So we had to maintain all those lines. And the fire direction center, the gun crews talked to the fire direction the fire center direction by wire. Center, well, see, they had the radar, which sit, my switchboard was set up in the back of the fire direction center. Ah, ah, so the BD-72, it only had 12 drops. And then we increased it, we stacked them, and we had, so we had 24 drops. And, and the purpose of the fire direction center was to tell the guns where to fire. So you had to maintain those those lines going to each well, gun, and the line went into the fire direction center, yeah, yeah. which they control the gun, yeah, yeah. and uh, any fine on the tracking unit. And so you had a lot of internal unit lines. Did right. you have external too? Did you have to communicate with we higher headquarters? The external, uh, when there was nothing big going on, uh, we tied into the fire direction center, of which the Officers, it was in the back of the radar. They controlled everything. All of my job was to make sure they had communication there. Yeah. So most of it was done by wire communication rather than radio communication. Right. Most of it was done by wire. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Interesting. How big a section was the wire? Uh, the, uh, the, in there we the had section. Like, we had 18 people that was wire radio. Mm -hmm. And then we had a uh, three-man message center all tied into the communication center. Where did you guys live? We had a, we lived in a, what we call a, you've probably seen them, what they call a, uh, Quonson Hut. Quonson Hut, that little they half moon Quonson shape. Hut right, right on the Horn River. Ah. And they were built when I got there. So that was fairly comfortable though, at least, wasn't it? Yeah, but see, the comm center was right outside the door of the, the Quonson Hut. Uh -huh. So it was about 10 feet from the, from the from the dome. I mean, what, not dome, was it, but the hut. Yeah, was it heated? The Quonset hut. Oh yeah, we had what we call what do you call the get uh, oil heaters. Pot belly stove type things. Yeah, not the pot belly, but it had oil heaters. Ah, okay, that was better. <laughs> it, it, well, we burned diesel. We burned gas. Yeah, yeah. Burned diesel. And uh, did somebody have to get up in the middle of the night? And well, it, you 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 had it, you put enough on that. It, if you turn it down low, it go. But see, they had uh, Korean, what they call Korean houseboys, ah. that supplied the... Okay. So the even while the war was going on, you had houseboys and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, we had houseboys. Yeah. That was kind of a common thing, yeah. houseboy. And then we had... Tell Korean me about that. Them. What does a houseboy do? Huh? Tell me about what a houseboy does. Well, we didn't have them up in the, up in the Quonson Hut. They were like, uh, all they did was come in and did the refueling of the... Uh, the heaters, they worked in the mess hall, and and at the down in the train. Yeah, were they were they male or female? Yeah, it was a male. Male, okay. So we had they, we had some female worked in the in the dining facility. So we had a makeshift dining hall. Dining hall. Was that in the Quonset hut too? Or no, no, they were down the down the hill, oh maybe seventy five yards from from the uh, village. Did weather play a part in uh, any of that? Did weather play a part in uh, any? Oh yeah, it was cold. Yeah, God knows it was cold. <laughs> uh, but we had to go down the hill to take a shower at the shower point. We had to go down the hill for the for, uh, for the mess hall. You had your own tray. You you dumped. It. You kept the tray with you up until at, at your hooch. We had to go down the hill to the latrine. All those things. Mm -hmm. 
but, but nothing was up on the hill around the guns. But that place, that, that base was pretty well set up by the time oh, you it got was, there. Oh, yeah, it was set up, and I don't remember how long it had been there. That is, I do uh, I remember them telling me that they lost a gun coming back over the uh, uh, Horn River, coming from Seoul. When they were retra- when the North Koreans pushed them back yeah, down. Yeah, one time. The I, Chinese that, that was before in. my time. Yeah, after the Chinese got in. Right, I, I, I heard about it yeah. and talked about it, but that was it. Were you there when the war ended? Yeah, I was there. The war ended the 27th of July, July 1953, on my brother's birthday <laughs> at 10.30 right? that night. I was standing out from the hooch right on the Horn River because my hooch was right on the Horn River watching uh, looking toward looking north toward Needlepoint watching the final rounds go off at 10.30 that night huh. that's when they stopped firing the water and stuff but that was you know. did, did, uh, did people violate that every now and then? Oh once or twice yeah. they had a uh, I guess you call it. We call them. We call them bed check Charlie. Yeah. That would go in, maybe drop one, one uh, around. There was kind of a night flying. They just followed the Horn River down, because they was on a conference also. Uh, well, that must have been quite a quite an exciting time. What happened the next day when when the war was over? Everything was kind of like at a standstill down in my area. But I, I guess the uh, north of us, was, it still was... Celebrations or...? Uh, not, I won't say a celebration, no. It, it was business kind of, as usual, almost. Everybody huh? was still suspicious and uh, protected. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. Um, when did you leave Korea then? I left Korea the 3rd of July, 1954. So you were in Korea over one Christmas at least, yeah. What was that like? Christmas in Korea. <laughs> well, everybody just sit around, play cards. Yeah. Uh, did you have a Christmas tree? Did you put up a Christmas tree? Or? No, I don't think I, I can't remember whether we had a Christmas tree yeah. in there. Yeah. Or what. Yeah. But see, the hooch had like half of it belongs to the signal signal platoon, and the other half was with the radar platoon. Uh. So they were down on one end, the signal was up on the other end. Uh, okay. So we, I mean, we got along. It was no, yeah, yeah. no help any doubts about it. Okay, you returned to the States, and how did you get back to the States? Did you fly or take I a came ship? Back, uh, I came back on boat, the Marine Phoenix. <laughs> you remember that name? <laughs> the Marine Phoenix, that which is an old transport? Well, I came all the way to Redden, California, like this. And I got to, went through... Camp, Come, not not Pemberton. Well, from there we came into Redditon, California, on boat. Uh-huh. Then they flew us out of there uh, to Arkansas, Port Chaffee. Port Chaffee, Arkansas. Huh? That's where I got discharged. So you took a discharge at this point in time. I got discharged huh? at uh, at Chaffee. I got out, stayed three, stayed fifty days. Uh-huh. During that 50 days, I got married. Well, why did you get out? Well, my intention, my brother had got out and re-enlisted, and my intention was staying. But I, the rumor was, if you, I was in E5 then, the rumor, if you re-enlist for three, before this new thing come in about the, the amount of money you would get, three years, I only paid you $90. Uh, three, uh, if you took six years, it paid three hundred dollars. So I was waiting on the rumors that I had, we had heard. You take three years, and that's five times your uh, monthly payment. Uh-huh. So that here I am, a E five, and it said a E five was making one hundred and twenty-two dollars a month. By the way, <laughs> so uh, you figure three years, three times. Thirty-six. Yeah, so you were playing the angle then. Huh? I played the angle. Yeah. Okay. And I come back in on this 16th of September. Okay. I, during that time, I got married the 1st of September. 
And uh, from a local girl, did you know her yeah. before? So, My and, wife and I went to school together. Yeah, so, she was two grades behind me. She was in college. Uh -huh. She was in there just completing her third year of college. And uh, I. Uh, and she knew you were going back in the Army. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we talked about it, and okay. I made up my mind. Job was jobs in Pitley Pool. Yeah, got, yeah got it was hard. Uh, now, when you came back in, you say you, you came back in again at Fort at Fort Jackson. Went back to Fort Jackson. Fort Jackson. I was hoping I'd get to uh, some place in Georgia or Alabama, but in the meantime, they sent me to Fort Huachuca. Oh boy. Now, what, did you did they they bring you back as an E five? Yeah. Okay, I was so you blessed. Had the same pay and because if, at that time, if you stayed out longer than ninety days, you lost. But if you re-enlisted prior to the ninety days, you retain your rank. Okay, so they sent you to Fort Huachuca. What did they have you do? This combat experience signal man. Do well, it? we had all kind of people uh -huh. at Huachuca. See, they were moving a lot of signal units from Fort Gordon, Fort Marmot. See, because Huachuca had just opened up in February, 19th of February, Fort Huachuca opened back up, and they had all kinds of people from all walks of life. And Huachuca is down in southern Arizona. Southern and, Arizona. And in, in the mountains, and they're doing a lot of testing of equipment. Well, well at the they, time, they, it became electronic proving ground. And I was assigned to one of the units that all we did was we start testing certain equipment, uh -huh. and it was a lot of housekeeping the first year I was there. Yeah. So yeah. they were just getting set up. Yeah. yeah they were How just long were you there? The first time I was there for four years. Good. I was there for four years, and I left and went to Germany. Well, okay. What, where did In you the go meantime, I, between Germ between Wachuca and Germany, I had to go to a pre-position weapon training at Fort Belvoir, Virginia, for two weeks. Never got a chance to utilize what I learned. Prepositioned weapon? Prepositioned weapon. What is that? That was a kind of a uh, underground uh, training, uh -huh. so forth. That secret? Yeah, it was. It was secret. And I, uh, instead of me going to Berlin, where I was supposed to have gone, I went to. I went by boat. Believe it or not, went that boat to. Bremerhaven, <laughs> yeah. sent me down to Munich. Well, that's not a bad place to go. <laughs> yeah, the 11th Airborne was there, and they were standing down. See, Augsburg, Germany, Munich, Germany had the 11th Airborne, and they were standing down becoming the 24th Division. Uh -huh. And I went to an engineer battalion, the, third, the 127 engineer, which was th the third engineer that came from I stayed there. My family wasn't there with me because my family didn't come over until uh, three months later. Uh -huh. But I was in the third engineer, still working signals as, as, a, as a comm chief now. Okay. You took care of all of your signal equipment. Yeah. Great. Then the thing come up because everybody looked at you there because that, most of them, 80% of them was airborne, uh, ex-airborne because the 11th was standing down in the 24th division was taken over. Yeah, the 11th was airborne and the 24th was a, a medic. Yeah, I happened to be in E Company, I think, I think it was E Company, 127 Engineer. Well, I went to headquarters company, put it that way. Okay. And because E Company was the only one that was on jump status when I went there. Okay. And I wasn't in that anyway. So, but every morning everybody had to go out for PT. PT. And airborne troops were strung out anyway, and I'm a non-jumper. So you didn't take too much static, did you? I, no, no. <laughs> well, me being an E5, I was just as yeah. drunk as they were. Yeah, but yeah. the only thing I didn't do, I didn't jump. Yeah. yeah. But see, they call your leg or whatever. Yeah. But when you went out for PT, they wanted to find out. The airborne troops thought, well, the was rise and shine on them. Here I am, an E5. I got to get out there yeah. and give PT. But that wasn't no problem with me. Because I love calisthenics and so forth. Yeah, yeah. You're so in the shape, colonel, right? after this one particular day, the colonel sent for me after PT. <laughs> he asked me, was I airborne? I said, no, sir. He said, are you planning on going? I said, no, sir. He said, would you like to go? I said, no, sir. 
He said, why? I said, sir, I wouldn't jump off a stool and better not nobody push me. I said, when you see me jump, then the pilot is not playing. So he laughed about it. He said, you know, you can't stay here on, uh, as a non-jumper. I said, well, I guess you're going to move me out. Yeah. A month later, I went over, to, went across the street to Warner Concern, 1st Battle Group, 21st Infantry. It had just stood down from the 502nd Airborne to the 21st Infantry. See, the Battle Group consisted of 1,500 men. So I stayed there until I uh, rotated. Rotated. Now, this was, you were a comm chief again? I was calm chief, and then I had this this guy come in that outranked me, you know, ranking guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, he's still here in the Gus. He's eighty. He's 90, 96 years old. Uh -huh. He was a uh, he was an infantry officer. Had just got ripped from major to an E six, like I had become an E six uh -huh. And so, with him being the ranking man, he had to take take the platoon. Sure. Yeah. So I stayed there. And when I rotated, well, he rotated before I did. And he come back. And uh, when he retired, he retired as a lieutenant colonel. But he's right here in in Augusta now. I talk to him once a week now. Well, you went back to Korea then. then. I went back to Korea uh, from Wachuca. I went back from, from, from Germany to Wachuca. Okay. I stayed there from... Six to one. When I left the twenty first, twenty fourth, they were getting ready to go to Berlin. It was uh -huh. a Berlin crisis. Okay. My wife was expecting, so they said, "You can't go. We're shipping you out." So I come back to the states without orders. They con contacted me and told me uh, orders would be following you, sending you back to Wachuca. So I was happy to go back to Wachuca because I had spent almost sure. four years there before. Yeah. So I wasn't no stranger. I had. Bought my family up back to Wachuca we went. We stayed there till December sixty seven. So I uh moved the family. I was hoping to go stay uh, come back to Wachuca, but they hadn't established this thing, you know, you leave and you come back come to back, the same yeah. place. So what they did, I moved my family to Alabama for a year. Back when my, my wife parents, my folks were around yeah, me also. So she too. had a support group, yeah. So I spent a year in uh, in Korea. What unit were you in? I was in the uh, 304 signal. I was in 304 signal. And where was that? Do you remember? That was right there in Youngsun, uh, right down from McGraw. Okay, okay. McGraw? Not McGraw, that's a. Uh, uh, But well, you I were right there, right there, right? in Youngsun. Yeah, and I stayed there with with the three hundred fours until I, what? I had, I was signaled. I had. What was section. their mission? Mission. We supported uh, Eighth Army. Then we had we had uh, equipment. I had equipment from K Mac East, K Mac West, and uh, Warren Jew, and. Then we had, uh, I had equipment over the 8th Army bunker and those things. But I had, had a lot of equipment uh, down, the, down the old sun. I had equipment down there that I, I had people assigned out there. But I was in young sun when something come up uh, with some of the equipment, some of it I could talk, talk them through it sometime. I had to get out and go uh, take my repair and go fix it. So you had a bunch of people spread out all I over the place. I had a bunch of people spread the, out all over. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of coordination and, uh, and right. maintenance. Right. If you knew if you knew your people, you had to, some of the best people out there yeah. in the field that you didn't have to go out. Like once in, once in a while, I had to go in the middle of the night track down to Osan. <laughs> Did you have any supply problems, or was it pretty? The supply system pretty the supply good. Supply system was was plentiful. Yeah. Okay. So we didn't have no uh, problems with supply in uh, Korea. Well, after you left Korea, you got sent to Fort Gordon, and I guess you were an instructor. I was huh? hoping I was get get back to Wachuca, but the, the answer was no. no. <laughs> they sent me back to sent me here. Uh -huh. I picked up my family. I come back in December of '68. Come down here, and I went house hunting because here my home is only 400 miles away. So me and my wife we drove down here looking for a house. I had all my paperwork. I'm not going to live downtown. Augusta, 
I'm going to find me some place I want to rent. And if I can't rent, I'm going to buy. So on the 3rd of December, 68, I was shopping around. One guy dropped, dropped me off because he wasn't talking right to me. And I didn't want to listen to him. And went back and another guy came out and picked me up and took me around. And took me out to South Augusta. And uh, it was just building up then, to be true for housing. I moved on to uh, a nice section, pretty good size lot, four, bought a four bedroom house. And uh, I'm still living in there. Ah, you're still there, huh? You must I did really some add on, but yeah, you know, yeah. as my kids, I had five kids. Uh, oh, super. Well, well you, you wound up in Vietnam at one point in time here, and uh, tell me about that. I was here for 20, for 20 months, uh, and I came down on order, uh, and I went to, went to uh, Vietnam. How did you two get field, there? Two field forces. How did you get to Vietnam? I went, I, I flew to Vietnam. Uh -huh. Through San Francisco? To San Francisco, to uh, Alaska. Saigon. Oh, okay. Okay. So then you went into probably the 90th replacement depot? Yes, I went in the 90th replacement. Did you have orders to a particular place uh, when right, you left right, the States? I, I had orders to uh, two field forces, which was right outside the gate of the 90, uh, 90th replacement. Okay, nice. I was on the General Westmoreland. Yeah, could be. Two field forces. Well, uh, two that field was forces was a, a core level headquarters. Now I was. I went to a uh, signal unit. Five hundred three. I mean, three hundred three hundred four. No, not three hundred four. Don't say that. Uh, well, listen. Fifty third signal company. I went to fifty third signal company. I replaced a friend of mine who was coming back. I was supposed to go to Bearcat. but they changed my orders and said you staying right here at fifty third signal because the first sergeant is leaving. He was a friend of mine, and I didn't know it, but the, the company commander was a friend of mine also. So they said, okay, you're not going to Bearcats, you're going to replace this guy. So I took over this unit as a first sergeant with over 300 people. Here I am as an E-7 taking a unit that got over 300 people. Well, wow, what, what was the unit's mission? They supported uh, two field forces. The headquarters. Headquarters. And uh, various other units were in in that area. So you had to communicate. Now, two field forces was a major core level headquarters that controlled the U.S. Uh, combat units in the Vietnamese Three Corps area. Yeah, they was, I think that's what they were doing. Yeah, yeah. And I had to... Uh, and including Saigon, too, right? Right, we had, we had units. I had, a, uh, had some equipment over... Uh, what's the big LB? Continue. Continue. Yeah. I had, I had equipment down there in uh, the big ass strip. So you had a lot of units under your uh, in, under the field force. Under the field force. The field support, uh, supported a lot of units. Plus, we supported two field forces headquarters under General Westmoreland. Yeah. Westmoreland was Mac, you know, was the senior commander then. And yeah. uh, he had everything. But I'd see him sometime on weekends, was he? Is that right? If I went up to check some equipment on weekends. Well, where was where was Two Field Force headquarters? It was in a little place called Plantation. In Long Bend, right? In Long Bend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that was a major, major U.S. Uh, facility in that area. I mean, they were you the, in 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 uh, Two Field Force in, in Long Bend. I were mean, that whole area was was all kinds. Well, of see, it. they had all kinds of stuff from, yeah. from from Long Bend to Ninety's replacement, and you why did they call it the Plantation? I don't know. Well, it's probably built on but a, see, a like French. You, like you said, they had LBJ there. Yeah. Well, I, I never saw it. I, I heard tell the people going there, but I never What's saw LBJ? It. Long Bend Jail. Jail. <laughs> yeah. I, right, that's I, good that you never saw it. I never saw it. I knew people that got sent yeah, over there. Yeah. Well, uh, what was your job there? There, I was started off being first sergeant. Yeah. And I stayed there. I would stay... First sergeant until a first sergeant came in, and there I were again. I'm down there in training. Okay. And uh, I stayed. I stayed there until I rotated out. But uh, just like I had had the company, and then the first sergeant came in, 
and here I'm, I don't have too much time left. Well, Long Bend, you must have had pretty good uh, living facilities there. You, it was it tents or buildings, or what did you live in? Well, we had, they had built huts. Yeah. And uh, uh, some of them was constant huts. You had outdoor. You had air conditioning, right? No. <laughs> I, <just laughs> I, had, I, had a, I had a couple of fans. Yeah. <laughs> you were lucky to have fans, huh? Yeah. But believe it or not, the guy that I replaced, he had even built a shower in there. So I was kind of blessed. Yeah. But I little slept right by the helicopter pad, within yeah. 50 feet of the helicopter pad. Yeah. You didn't get much sleep then, or did you get used to I it? I learned to sleep in, in that kind of noise. Just like in Korea, I learned to sleep with the finer, finer the 90 millimeter gun when they shook the whole side. Yeah. Yeah, after you've been there going out. time, you get used to it. Yeah. As long as it's going out, you get used to it. When it's coming in, you never get used to it. No. And two or three times we got it. Did you did you uh, go on R and R to no. Vietnam? No, no R and R. That wasn't my thing. How about uh, uh, any USO shows? Was there any USO shows come up there? Yeah, I went over to. They had some USO shows over at uh, on uh, Long Bend, but they didn't. We didn't have any on plantation. Yeah, yeah. They would always have a, a truckload, two or three truckloads that they took out. Took you guys. Not everybody could go to every. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had a big. Big that, that, you know. How about, uh, well, you said you had a medical profile along about this time, too. Didn't well, you? yeah, see, I had three profiles. I had had surgery on, my, on, my, on one knee before I come in, then I re-injured it. And then I started having problems during the Korean War with my right knee. But it didn't give me much problem until I went to the 24th Division in Germany when you do a lot of running and PT and so forth, and that created your problem yeah. on your legs. So, but they gave me a, pro, a three profile. So here I got a three profile on my knee. Yeah. I also had a three, I had glaucoma in my right eye. So I got a three in that. And then I was having hypertension, yeah. Uh, yeah. hypertension and diabetes. Wow. But they said, okay, every time I came down on a, on assignment for Vietnam, when I was at Huachuca, it really took me so long to get out of there because I had a three profile. Yeah. And they would not send a person to MAGB with a three profile. So I couldn't get out of there. Yeah. But they so, sent you to two field forces, huh? And, yeah, they sent me to two field forces. Well, I went to Korea before I went uh, with my three I profile. See. Then I came here. My next move was Vietnam with three profiles. And I did not get, uh, I would not get rid of my three profile. Like I said, if you get rid of, Sergeant Major would sit on the board at, at, at Book Ward one time. Jack Cummings, I don't know if you knew him because he's deceased now, bless his heart. He told him to, he gave him what he recommended of me. But then, I remember the colonel, I don't know his name, he said, if you get rid of your profile, you will make E8. I'm too far gone. Yeah, yeah. Here well, I am, got 20, uh, already at 20 years of service, and no point of me saying, hey, I'm, uh, I'm going to change my profile. Whatever I'm going to get now, give it to me. Yeah. Well, when you left Vietnam, where did you go? I had an assignment to the Pentagon. I stayed up there five days. Work my way back to Fort Gordon because my family, like I said, I bought a house, yeah. had a wife and five kids. I didn't want to be there. Yeah, I like know. I said, I had 13 months for 20. So were you an instructor then in signal school? I was an instructor. I had been an instructor when I came here the first time. Yeah. And then 31 Charlie, 05 Charlie Corps. Then I got back here. I saw this colonel and he told me, he said, you got 13 months for retirement. I said, I'm planning on taking project transition and getting out. I'm not going to move my family here. So he said, he told his colonel, who was a, he, uh, I knew him, as, he and his buddy, both of them, I knew him as a lieutenant in, in Germany. He said, take him to lunch, I'll have him all this cut when he get back here. So he, he got so back he to Gordon, huh? Cut, he told me, he says, we got 27 people over in your MOS. And he says, I think you are going to retire. Yeah. I said, my plans are to retire. Unless something happened. Packed my bag. I called my wife and said, pick me up. Packed my bag. 
and headed and flew back here to Fort Gordon. I stayed here till, till I retired in 76. And I, at the time of my retirement, I was NCOIC, uh, part of the basic NCOS Corps. So you had the NCOS and you had the basic NCOS. I started off it's back in the 05 Charlie course and old equipment, 26 Delta and those big, big things. And uh, I stayed out there until they formed the basic NCOS course and I took over the uh, which four universities had Lyman, 31 Q, yeah. 31 Mike, and 31 Charlie. So I had those was at the end, almost at the end of the course that my people taught them troubleshooting and so forth on equipment. So you supervised the instructors for the basic uh, Right, we had training. people that was coming in that were looking to go up yeah. and yeah. like from E4 and some of them was even E6s. But to better their career, they had to go to basic and school. Yeah. And I had one of the courses. Good. Well, you retired on June 30th, uh, uh, 1976 as a Sergeant First Class, That's E7. Right. And you had um, uh, Army Commendation Medal, seven Good Conduct Medals, National Defense Service Medal, Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal, Korean Service Medal, UN Service Medal, Korea, Vietnam Service Medal, Vietnam Campaign Medal, and Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry with Palm. You did okay for yourself. Well, I didn't. I got something I didn't get. Yeah. I wasn't looking for it. Yeah. CIB. Yeah. I didn't have one of those. Well. I, were you were you ever wounded or anything? No, no. Oh, yeah. How about uh, what did you do after you got out of the service? I got out. I went to school at uh, Augusta Tech for one year. Mm -hmm. I took uh, electrical wine, house wine, and so forth. I didn't want to do that. That was just you had to have something. But I had told my wife when the day come for me to get out. Don't worry about it. I can take care of you and the five kids. And I had three kids going to college. Wow. Almost at all within a year. And I did not want to drag them all over the country anymore. Well, that's understandable, sure. And so I got out, went to school for a year, and I was drawing ninety dollars a week. But going to school I did that for nine months. Then after that I went uh, a guy in the thirty one Charlie Coast, the whole five Charlie Coast I used to work with. He was down at uh, Columbia Nitrogen uh, yeah. Chemical Plant. The chemical plant. Yeah. I went down there and worked for five years. After five years, they was hiring at Fort Gordon. So, oh, put in my paper to see when they hired me. Back in the same course. So you were a civilian instructor in the same course? Went here? right back to the same course as civilian instructor. Oh, I worked there as a GS-9 Went up, went up DO, DOTD in training section, made GS-11. Mm. Then the RIF came in 80, and, RIF was 86, 88, 88. I got caught in the RIF, lost everything, went out. 50 days later, they brought me back as a GS-5. Because I had been active in recreation, they put me in the gym. Mm. So I ran a gym. Hmm. Well, let me take you back to your, your, your days in the service a little bit here. Uh, you come, kind of, can you compare the Korean experience to the Vietnam experience? What was that like? I mean, it, two entirely different scenarios, wasn't it? Yeah, cold in Korea. Hot in Vietnam. <laughs> Vietnam, wet, raining all the time. But I was more or less in, in the uh, Korean War, I stayed at one place on that hill because we supported, you know, all the equipment was dug in and so forth. And we were supporting, we were on the 8th Army, supporting Kempo Air Base. Because yeah. now Kempo Air Base was a fighter base, so was uh, Osan Air Base, and so was K-6, uh, that was K-14 and Young Nopo. So it, it was not, that was a... Uh, Busy place. Well, it, well, out of Young Nopo, that's where all your uh, commercials went in and out. Uh -huh. 
what, what, was there any time in either place that you thought that, boy, this is pretty scary? <laughs> what was your scariest time? Well, I, number one, I remember the MiG-15 that first come in. You remember when the, the, the MiG, uh, he landed, in fact, he, I was right into the split between Young Young Po and uh, Kempo. I saw the aircraft go, go over and he's being escorted. And it was a MiG-15. Because, you know, in anti-aircraft artillery, you get schooled in those yeah, type yeah, of planes yeah. and so forth. So I saw it, but before I could get back to the unit, it was gone. They had left Kempo because we were about five miles outside of Kempo. Yeah. It was gone. So I remember that part. But uh, then yeah. you're going on heavy alert when things like that happen. Is that, is that the time that that big pilot defected and brought the plane in? That's right. Yeah. I remember seeing that. Yeah. Then... My first night in, I think my first night in, in Korea sitting on that hill is when the, we first opened up and here I am. They, they show you where all your ammunition and things like that go, where you go in case of the loot. And I wind up, the old boy from Syracuse, New York was my, was my guide more or less. So I went to the gun. I was assigned to a gun instead of being signed into the combo section because combo section had a gun to uh, to man doing an alert. Uh -huh. So so you you uh, I didn't get a chance to get on the equipment during that first night of firing. Almost like Navy general quarters. You went and helped <laughs> fire, huh? I went down there. He took took me down there. And here, you know, you got your you got your sandbags around yeah. everything, and all of a sudden. When you get being in the gun unit, I learned uh, afterward what they when they said gun free, gun free fired anything. So when you know gun hold, nobody can do nothing. When you get gun free, any aircraft coming by, uh, up there, you you subject to fire on it. So I remember that night they said it was a uh, American plane that got hit coming back, and he was trying to get back to Kempo, and they opened up on him. They didn't knock him out of, the sky, out of the sky, but they opened up on him because his radar, they said his radar, none of that stuff was working on him, but he was just making it on his own. They couldn't tell it was a U.S. plane. Right. So when they opened up, Ernie Swin from, from Syracuse, New York, you know, I try to do what they say do when you take uh, machine gun fire is the gunner is back here, and you sitting right here looking him in the eye. So I try to, you know, I'm holding the belt, and he opened up, and the uh, empty shell case and started hitting me on my helmet. I got in, got in my bunker, but I had to crawl back under. And he told me, he said, "You know where the ammunition? Go get some." And I ain't going nowhere right now. <laughs> but after about ten minutes, yeah. uh, they, after I got my nerves up, <laughs> I decided to go, but. Those were some of the things. Well, yeah, you remember the humorous things and the good times more than the, the bad ones. Most well, of the see, time. I had uh, I, I had good training. Then I had I dealt with older people. Mm -hmm. You know, being a young guy in the army, you deal with older sergeants and stuff like that. You learn something. Yeah. And because now we had younger people to before I retired, I saw it coming. It was time for me to go. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I call them. Outhouse lawyers. <laughs> well, you said you saw Westmoreland once. Did you I used see to see him other, every uh, once in a while he, yeah. because he was up uh, two field forces headquarters. Yeah, yeah. That was his. That was his thing. How about you? Ever use the GI Bill when you came back to the states? Or? Yeah, I like. I used my GI Bill when I went to went to Augusta Tech ah. for one year. Well, listen. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else you want to tell us about here? Plus, Any I, other plus I had my stories? kids. I had my my kids. Uh, I got a little bit of assistant from you know for my kids when they were in college uh -huh. but then their overall thing was yeah. I was trying just trying to school my kids and after I went to work and I got caught I mean from Fort Gordon I got caught in the rip again I said I'm, I'm out of here the chief of staff came over and saw me one day and he says uh, Mr. Dawson I see your name is on the rip again as a colonel I tell you I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. 
If you see me, a hair teller me jumping out of the 13th floor in Sigma Tau, you start an investigation because I did not jump. Somebody pushed me. <laughs> so I wound up, I went out to post. I took up something my dad taught me how to do. That was painting. I took up house painting inside. And I would not take a two-story building uh, outside to paint. I did that until 2000, 2001, uh, 2000, because my daughter passed in 2001. She had been on me about, Daddy, uh, it's too hot out there for you to be climbing up on a ladder painting the house by yourself. And I was having a lot of problems with my legs then. Well, do you think there's anything that uh, the young people today get, can learn from what you and your generation did? Did they, did they learn anything? What, what do you want them to learn about that? Oh, you mean teaching in the, yeah. in the Army? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I had some good, that was some good ones. In fact, I saw a guy the other day, was one of my students <laughs> way back there. And uh, every once in a while I come across somebody that I taught in the single school. That's got to make you feel good, huh? Yeah, and they come up and they always say, in fact, last week I saw one. And I was out, out at, uh, at the commissary and this guy come in. Well, listen, let me ask you to do one more thing. Why don't you put that hat on for me? That's a, you don't see too many of those that have both Korean No, you don't and see Vietnam. many of these around, but every once in a while you see a W, I call them WW2, Korea, and Vietnam. Well, sir, uh, we want to thank you for participating in our program, and we also want to thank you for your service to our country. Okay.